we're now getting astronauts from all walks of life. We're seeing increasing diversity in the astronaut corps. That's what we want and need. We can't do it the way we did it in the old days. We can't do it where we just pick you because you're brave as heck and you can land a fighter plane on an aircraft carrier. That's good, and that's part of it, but that's just a small part of it. I was working as a comparative physiologist doing field work with animals in the wild. So it is, I think, a bit of a sacrifice to give up that whole other career. But the times I've been most happy and, and most content in my life are the times when I've been working somewhere with both a physical and mental challenge. And I think being an astronaut is the perfect culmination of that both physical and mental challenge. I just feel incredibly lucky and fortunate to be here. The Apollo era astronauts were test pilots. Incredibly self-confident, driven, motivated, aggressive. These guys are gonna be on the cover of Life magazine and they're gonna be in the public eye. So good looking and charismatic and good on camera. Then we went into the era of the space station with larger crews and longer missions. So now the test pilot mentality wasn't as important. You needed people who were gonna be able to get along and be harmonious together for a long period of time in a small space. I'm gonna fly around here and give you guys a little tour. Oh, look, Misha's, Misha's cleaning his crew quarters. He sleeps on the ceiling. Look, he's in there vacuuming. There's my, my crew quarters right there. I'll show you my bag. There's my bag on the wall. Interpersonal relationships and flexibility and sense of humor and patience and generosity became things that NASA looked for. With spaceflight or any exploration that involves intense confinement, and you're all in a very tiny space. They should serve this in the restaurant at home. Maybe the. The whole idea of individual territoriality, what I call the who moved my coffee cup that was on my desk, right? You come in and it's been moved and you go, who did that, right? <laughs> right away you're angry that somebody would touch your personal space. You don't just cannibalize my equipment when you need to jury rig a goddamn junction box. I needed the fan to cool the upgrades. It was the only option. If I don't fix this now, we are going to have problems with the Robert. upgrades later on. From that kind of a problem to why someone always insists on singing or playing their music and, you know, somebody ate my food, all the little things, it sounds astonishing, billion dollar explorations, and yet it comes down to the little things that will often determine what happens. That's why crews have to be trained in conflict management, how to settle these issues, how to ensure they can do their job, do the mission, and not get trapped in dislike or annoyance with each other. But I have to tell you, they're remarkable people, men and women. They come in all shapes and sizes and personalities, but the bottom line is, you gotta be technically sophisticated and you gotta be behaviorally, psychologically, and biologically fit. And you have to have a total commitment to this endeavor and a willingness to put up with just about anything to get it done. Our training is really critical to everything that we do in space. No day is the same. You know, one day you might be flying a jet. The next day you might be in the pool practicing the spacewalk in the neutral buoyancy lab. We might be taking a Russian language course one day or learning about the various space station systems. It's really getting us toward that next step on, you know, as NASA likes to say, the journey to Mars. That's what we're all here for. That's the mark on the wall that, uh, that the entire world seems to be looking at right now is, is going to Mars.